Yes, there we go. Um, good morning. Um, it's lovely to see so many of you here today. Um, I think we do benefit from the 10 a.m. start. If it was a 9 o'clock start, maybe not quite so many faces. But shout out to James Woodward for introducing that. 2015? Fantastic. So I'm not feeling fuzzy because I've had an extra hour in bed. Um, many of you know me, but my name's Sally. I'm Head of End User Services at Leeds Beckett University. Um, and if you're wondering what that means, it means I'm responsible for the frontline support, so service desk, support services, which is a desktop and desk side support, classroom IT and AV support, printing and the IT training unit. Um, and as well as that day job, I'm also currently leading on a programme of work with a very snappy title of Unified Service Delivery Model, or uh, USDM as it is um, very fondly known in our department. So I'm here to talk to you a bit about this program um, and in particular to talk to you about our very recent implementation of Ivanti Service Manager. Um, I think we're in, oh hang on, sorry, I've got some, there we go, right we are in the right order. Um, a bit about IT services then, we have a very ambitious aim of creating and developing and take a deep breath here, an innovative, agile and service orientated environment with a network learner focused capability that's for built and developed on a robust IT infrastructure. And really our aim is to implement and maintain information systems, services, applications, tools that will just enable the effective and efficient function of our university. And to support this, we actually wanted to look at our service delivery model and how we were delivering IT services. And that's where Unified Service Delivery Model um, was born. So our vision for this program then is that we will use um, a set of shared and standard processes and a shared ITSM tool to provide a single point of contact for users of IT systems and services. It was all around looking at how we can improve communication and information ensuring the effective turnaround of incidents and requests, increasing customer satisfaction and customer service, and providing meaningful management information. When I arrived in 2015, um, the way that IT support was delivered and managed varied widely. There was multiple contact points, there was multiple tools, there was no integration between the tools, um, we didn't separate our incidents and requests, um, and it was just made anything that kind of had to be shared across the department really difficult. And actually we had KPMG in and they said that there was a recognisable risk in the way that we were delivering IT uh, because we were using such a distributed and diversified model. There was a lot of duplication and there was a lot of inconsistency. So that's really where the unified service delivery model um, came from. Um, it is quite a big programme and so we're trying to break it down into, I won't say bite sized because they're not bite sized chunks, but smaller pieces of work. Um, and initially for phase one of USDM we looked at six core work streams. So the first one was processes um, and that was about defining a new set of processes um, that would be used right across um, the IT support function. Separating out incident and requests for the first time and making sure we could deliver fast and effective um, IT support, it's really hard to get IT people to focus on process, but more about that in a moment. Um, and then ITSM tool, we wanted a single tool that was used by the entire support function that would be used for recording all that support information, giving us better management oversight, better communication, integration of complaints, compliments and suggestions, and also integration of major incidents. <coughs> We also wanted that single point of contact um, and we wanted that to be sector leading. So we were using, we're looking at using service desk certification programme just to provide us with a detailed roadmap for continual service improvement, demonstrating our commitment to best practice and improving the perception of IT within the university. <clears throat> it was also about increasing performance, driving up morale of the team um, and we're well underway with that programme. In fact, we've got our certification audit in September 2018, so I think we've got about I think we've got about 40 working days before that takes place, which is slightly terrifying, but feeling reasonably confident. <coughs> um, the next one then was service catalogue. Sorry, Steve, boo. Um, yeah, just as a way of enabling us to advertise and market our services, um, communicating the services that we offer, defining services, maybe defining service level agreements. We may decide after Steve's uh, one, uh, room 101, maybe uh, we might revisit that. 
But just, um, just on that, I will say, um, we were very clear that the service catalogue is not the actual objective. It's an enabler. It should be a vehicle for improving comms. Um, and we're trying to use it to develop an understanding and a definition of what we do. Um, and actually, along, we're using it alongside our customer relationship management role to drive engagement. We've tried to focus it on business outcomes. That's actually quite different, uh, difficult. And we were hoping to use it as a precursor to service level agreements, but maybe not now, who knows. Um, the next one, service transition, we haven't really got this one off the ground yet, but this is a bit of a pain point for us. Um, any of you who've seen any of my other sessions, I've got a bit of a bugbear about fence lob, um, where you know stuff is just kicked over from project into support with not any real handover, um, and we have kind of struggled with that a little bit. Um, it has improved, but they still need to do a lot more to ensure that there is effective transition from project into BAU with a focus on testing and training and effective planning and effective um, customer engagement. And then finally, um, service reporting. Um, so we wanted to focus reporting data um, that's in our newly um, implemented tool. At the moment, we don't do much reporting. Not all IT support information was being logged. We're trying to change that. Um, and the reporting that we were doing was very focused on operational metrics rather than business outcomes. So we're trying to develop reporting that looks at our, both our operational needs but also our strategic needs because what we actually want is reporting that will support us making informed and effective decision making. Um, so that's kind of it for phase one. Um, but today I'm predominantly going to be talking about the, um, the ITSM tool. Am I too far away? Can you click it on? Oh dear. Last minute changes, you see. I don't do, I'm a dancer, not a singer. <laughs> right, just talk amongst yourselves, it's fine. No, no. It wasn't me. <laughs> There we go. So the current state of our ITSM tool prior to May, um, May the 9th, uh, we had a long um, established implementation of Landesk. Um, it was, I like to describe it as unloved. Um, we'd not really been much development or enhancements for considerable time. We didn't have any develop, uh, dedicated developer resource. There was no emphasis on process. It had just been kind of put in. It was ticking along. I'll be honest, my view was it was being used as a... Um, an incident tracker rather than an ITSM tool. Um, there was no differentiator between incident and request. Customer communication was generally taking place outside of the tool. It was not used consistently, so everybody was using it in a slightly different way, and actually a good chunk of IT were not using it at all. Um, there was a self-service portal. It's probably the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Um, and it was just wildly, wildly out of date. So there was nothing wrong with the product itself. It's just we'd not really done anything with it. Um, <clears throat> what did we actually want? We wanted a product that would support all of the ITIL processes. We wanted integration with our service catalogue. We wanted um, a modern, user-friendly self-service portal, something that people would actually want to use. We wanted to make sure it would be used consistently and that it was used by everybody, that it was actually the single repository for IT support information, because if not, that your reporting is not really proper reporting. Um, we wanted improved management information through reports and dashboards, and we wanted to integrate our complaints, compliments and suggestions and our major incident. So at that point, um, we were looking at going out um, to tender, um, but this would extend the time sales quite considerably. And at that point, we had a lack of project management capacity in the department. Um, so we were going to struggle to support a full tender. Um, so I did a quick scan of the um, market leaders. I looked at the quadrant magic Gartner thing. Um, <laughs> and I looked at something pink said, and, and, and I've always had quite a strong view. And Andy, I don't know if he's in the room and needs to put his fingers in his ears at the moment. They're all pretty much the same. I know they all look slightly different, but in terms of functionality and what they deliver, they are pretty much the same. It's what you do with them and it's how you work with your supplier. Um, and actually, we'd been with Landesk nine years. We had a long established relationship. We weren't leveraging that relationship, but that was really down to us. Um, 
and actually there was nothing gained from getting a new one. Um, so I thought, well, why don't we just actually scrap what we've currently got and just rebuild it from the ground up? So that's what we decided. And just as we came at that decision point, I came back to work after Christmas 2016, and an email hit my inbox, and I found out that Front Range and Landesk had merged, and I thought, oh, that's good timing. So what we were actually able to do was to actually get a new product, because we've gone with the Front Range offering, um, without actually going out to tender and keeping that relationship with the supplier. So um, it was win-win for us, really. So the approach then, um, January to May 2017 was all about process mapping with a focus on incident and request. So our IT service management capabilities um, at Leeds Beckett are quite immature, so it was kind of starting from scratch. Um, people don't like to do process mapping. IT people do not like to do process mapping. They want to play with the tool, they want to have a look at it. Also, people are really opinionated about IT service management tools. I can't tell you the amount of emails that I got saying we should get this one, we need to get this one, we need a Microsoft product, we need Jira, we need this. We don't, we just need to do our processes first. Um, but with a bit of per perseverance and some help from our continuous improvement unit, um, we did actually map our processes. Um, and what we actually realised were, they were we weren't doing anything special, we weren't ready to do anything special, and it was all pretty much at the kind of standard incident and request stuff. Um, from May to September then, we did the project planning, so that was all about signing the contracts. Um, we were actually uh, decided that we wanted to move from on-premise to cloud, um, so we were looking at that. We were planning schedules, project prep, um, and all those kind of things. And then January to March 2018 was all about the build. Again, we'd gone, we've kind of gone with um, a keep it simple, get it done. So we've gone out of the box where possible because giving people a blank piece of paper and saying, what do you want the tool to do? is actually, when your process maturity is so low, it's really difficult. So my view was, let's just get it in. See, we'll just turn it on, see what happens, um, and then we'll take it from there. And that's kind of what we're doing. And that also allowed us a really fast implementation because ITBM was creaking. It was on, um, you know, it's... Almost, it was out of support because it had not been upgraded for so long. Um, and just kept on with that, keep it simple, get it done. And then March to May 2018 was the actual implementation. And we've had a very, very strong focus on engagement and adoption um, with really a big emphasis on testing plans, training plans, um, communication and engagement. And, and that's really where a lot of the energy and effort has gone. So the project then, um, it is important to do process first. We did all the, 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 maps, uh, the maps and everything. It was hard to get IT to do that, but we did. Um, and then we ran the fundamental workshop and the blueprint workshop in early September with a bit of mixed success. I think in hindsight, we should have got to know the product a little bit more because you're making decisions that at that point around configuration without really knowing, um, so that, that's something I would say, you know, at least have a familiarity with you, don't just turn it on, have some familiarity with the product. Um, Ivanti provided us with the technical implementation plan, which was really useful because we actually, it saved us a lot of time because we just slotted our bits in between, and we did the kind of backwards thing and, and we got an estimated go live date of 9th of May, uh, which might sound fast to some of you, but it seems to be take for ages for me. Um, again, that strong focus on training, testing and communication to support adoption and engagement. And we also introduced um, the change champions, which I think has been one of the sort of key reasons why the implementation has gone so well. Um, so I think it's really essential to get buy-in. Um, at the end of the day, a tool is just a tool. You're actually wanting behaviour and cultural change. Just putting a new tool in by itself is not going to do that. And also, from previous experience um, of, of, of being a service desk manager during a new tool implementation and how uncomfortable it can feel, um, I didn't want this to be something that the teams felt was just kind of given to them, something that just happened to them, um, because then you do lose that engagement. I wanted it them to be able to contribute. At the end of the day, um, I like to think I know it all, but I don't. Um, and I'm not doing the day job. I'm not sat using that tool every day. So I shouldn't be the one that's saying, yes, it should be pink and no, it should be green. Um, so it was trying to work out a way of getting that. You can't go out to everybody because you just end up with a, a thousand things and they all conflict. 
Um, so what we did was we set up change champions. So every um, team in the department was asked to nominate a change champion. And their role really was to kind of disseminate project information because project information tends to go to managers who are not always very good at cascading the messages, I find, um, and I'm guilty of that myself. So I wanted them to kind of know what was going on and to feel involved. Um, it was about communicating timelines, benefits and deliverables, and the benefits and the deliverables was really important. So why are we doing it? We're not just putting a new tool in for the sake of the new tool. Again, a tool is just a tool, it's not the deliverable, and I think that's really important to keep sight of that in a, in a tool implementation. It's the enabler for your service, it's not the service. Um, also to consider lessons learned from previous experience. So I've got some previous experience of going through um, a tool implementation, but so have lots of others and I think it's really important. I think we forget sometimes, if you actually add up how many years experience you're in a room when, you, when you're doing a project and are you actually using and utilising that knowledge and information. Uh, the other thing is being a temperature taker for positivity and negativity. Um, I no longer am office, based in the offices where the teams work. So I don't get the corridor conversations so much these days and I don't hear the kind of, I'll say bitching, um, that I used to when I was in my previous role. I could hear when they were saying, oh God, this is awful, I hate it. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we were kind of, and people were always, they're not always brave enough to come and say, actually I don't like it, I think it's rubbish. Um, so I, I, I wanted to have change champions out there that were kind of being that temperature taker. And then the big one was around facilitating um, the evaluation and the testing. Um, and that actually worked really, really well. Um, so then the implementation then, um, I've always wanted to say command and control centre, so that's what I set up. <laughs> uh, it just sounds, I don't know, really much more exciting than it is, but um, that was literally just making sure the people involved in the implementation were all in one place for a few days. Um, we, we've got, we, IT services is based in a beautiful manor house. It's absolutely gorgeous, but it is a rabbit warren. Um, and you can spend all day chasing people around, missing them on staircases and stuff. So having, having the kind of core team in the office um, and, and just they could, people could come in and ask questions and say, oh, it's not working or it is working or all that kind of stuff. Um, and I got to say command and control centre, so that's fine. Um, we also set up daily debriefs during Go Live Week and that was attended by all the change champions. Um, plus a few sort of key man, uh, managers, so the service desk manager, the support services managers, um, the developers, and um, during that, the, the two days that we had the Avanti on site, they were involved as well. And we set up a warranty defect log. Um, so this was just a spreadsheet that was made available to all the change champions, um, and it was for them to log any questions, any requests, any bugs, um, because I wanted them to feel that they were contributing. Um, and I wanted them to, uh, you know, have, at the end of the day, I'm not using the product um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And that actually worked really well. It's a horrible spreadsheet. Um, it's really unwieldy. It's really ugly because people have pasted screenshots and all kinds of in it. Um, and, and trying to tidy it up now at the end of the project is a bit of a nightmare. But actually, um, it just, just really helped with the engagement and buy-in. We also had on-site support for two days. So we had the Ivanti consultant came in. Um, the day before and the day of implementation. I don't, on the day of implementation, I don't know who was more nervous, me or him, um, but it was really good having him on site because I think he actually gets to see the university and can kind of see what we're trying to achieve. Um, and I probably drove him, well, I did drive him absolutely mad because it's only when you turn it on you can see all the stuff it can do. So we had two days of, oh, could you just, could you just, oh, look at that. Um, and he was very, very good. He was very flexible. He was very patient, which you would need to be. I was kind of quite strung out those first few days. Um, as well as that, we also had um, day, um, sort of a day one, a day three, and a day nine review, so I'll talk a bit more about them. Um, and then after the first week, we had weekly debriefs. Um, and what we did in the debriefs was we allowed all the change champions to say um, a red, amber, green status. So they were actually saying, not me or the project manager were saying, this project is green. It's the people that are using the tool get to say whether it's red, amber, green. Um, we also had to do an age ticket review, which has been, that was probably been the most painful. Um, so we've got a queue, we had a queue in our old system. I think it got to 450 at one point. I think the oldest ticket was three and a half years old. Um, and so trying to wind 
that down was quite challenging. So what we did was on day one, on day one of the implementation, we turned the new tool on, everything new was logged in it. And then I said, right, you've got five weeks to run all your old stuff down. And if you don't run it down, you are going to be responsible for manually transferring it over into the new system. Um, and we were quite, um, I don't know what the word is, um, but I sent out a list every three days of the numbers and that went to senior managers as well. Um, so we did see that queue go down, maybe not quite as fast and it's actually taken seven weeks, not five weeks, but I think we are now in the point where we can actually turn off the old system, so hurrah. Um, but that was probably the most painful bit. Um, so the, oops. So the day one, day three and day nine reviews, then they were a bit more in depth than the daily debriefs. And they were actually the day, I think the day nine was actually the point of no return. What we'd said was as a rollback if it all went horribly wrong. Because that's what I was planning for, because that's how it feels, isn't it? It's all going to go crazy and we're going to have to start from scratch. Um, was the point of no return, so we knew when we got to day nine that we, that was it. There was no going back from that point. Um, and that was, and more senior managers were involved in that and it was a bit more in depth and looking at some of the data that was being um, inputted. So day one, it was green, said the change champions. I was thinking, oh, okay, surprise, but yeah, that's all right. Day three, still green. I was thinking, oh, okay, I'm still a little bit worried. And then day nine, um, still green and breathe. And it was only at that point, day nine, did I think, oh, actually, this has gone really well because that was not what I was expecting. Um, and actually seeing the level of engagement with the warranty log showed that the, the focus on adoption um, and engagement had been the right approach. So teamwork makes a dream work. This is us on day one of Go Live. Um, I have been amazed and surprised um, with how well the transition went. We only had one major incident in the first, one major issue, one major snag in the first nine days. And that was identified and resolved within 24 hours. Uh, we made fantastic progress on the low-level snags and enhancements um, in the first few days. So literally, um, in, the first, in the warranty period, we just did changes on the fly. So if somebody said, this bit's not working, it got fixed, there was none of that testing and all that stuff, which is probably not great practice. But it worked for us, so yeah. Um, and actually, I think people seeing that being turned around really quickly it just increased the engagement to the point where I thought, God, that spreadsheet, can it get any bigger and how are we ever going to get through them all? Um, but the, the, the thing that kind of really hit home to me was during that first week and, and then the first month, there was no reduction in service levels that we offered to our customers. We got no customer complaints. There was no detrimental impact to customers. And, the, um, and they're my t key temperature takers to service desk were actually really happy. Um, and it was a massive, massive team effort. And I think the change champions, the two developers that we've got working in business systems, the service desk, and actually Ivanti as well. Um, and we have worked really, really hard on that partnership with Ivanti. Um, but that has really, really paid off. Um, and it just reduced the expected turbulence. Now I'm going to give that, that's John, our consultant, um, but I'm going to give a shout out to John and to uh, Matt, uh, Matt, who's our project manager. So just say, we heart you. Thank you very much. You've been fabulous, flexible, patient, and passionate. So that was really good. Um, but as with everything, there were some things, you know, I'm not just going to say it was a completely rosy picture. There were some things that could have gone better. Um, we should have engaged with the Avanti training much earlier. We should have had much more familiarity with the product. Um, we should have focused on requests a bit more. And I think if I'd have had the familiarity with the product and understood a bit more about how requests were built, I might have done the request stuff differently and saved our power consultant an awful lot of time and headache. Um, the lack of IT service management capabilities at Leeds Beckett meant um, I was a massive, massive bottleneck on the project. Um, and that was quite challenging at times. And then there were some, I won't say challenges, but there was some cautiousness around moving from premise to cloud, which maybe I'd not anticipated in building in. Um, and I think I just thought, oh yeah, it's cloud, it's fine. You know, they do it for loads of customers. There'll be no issues. Um, but actually our technical um, architect and our IT security manager wanted to kind of turn it inside out and ask a lot more questions. So lining the right people up with Ivanti and the right people up at our side was quite time consuming and took maybe longer than I'd expected. So you might want to do a bit more of that in your, in your planning. What went well? Project management from Ivanti was absolutely fantastic. 
very patient. Um, I think we were on the phone uh, every sort of couple of days. Really good, strong project plan. Uh, really flexible because it did keep changing my mind. Use of the change champions. Um, you know, I would really recommend that, and we are keeping that group together. Big focus on communication, um, engagement and adoption. This was very unpopular but did pay off process training. So before anybody got any system training, they had to have process training. Um, nobody likes process training, let's be honest, but um, it was important for them to understand. I didn't just want to deliver training that said, press this button and fill in this field. It's why you're pressing that button, why you're filling in this field. Um, we did an operational support model with Ivanti, so we're very clear on what we do and what they do and how we engage with them if we're not happy, um, who I ring up to um, chew their ear off and, and those kind of things. And actually, the approach that we've taken means we've, we've been quick to see improvements and value, even in the first week, which I really, I thought things would get worse and then get better, but actually, they went better straight away. Um, just um, that was the, some of the feedback we received in the first week, which was absolutely amazing um, and not what I was expecting at all. I was like, oh, hey, hey, I can't get used to it. It's horrible. Um, the fact that people were saying it already feels like a positive step in the first few days was just amazing. Uh, next steps, governance and change management. We do need to um, take it forward. The work has just started, which is absolutely fine, but... Um, so what we're doing is we're keeping the Change Champions group and they will be responsible for the governance and the prioritisation of low-level enhancements and developments. Knowledge management, we want a self-service portal, you can't do it without knowledge management. Um, and we are focused on, we've got a continual service improvement roadmap. We've also pinched somebody from the service desk for three months, I might give him back, I might not, um, <laughs> to uh, actually be a full-time developer, but I've got that argument with Alex when I get back, so... Phase two, we'd really want to do um, a create an amazing self-service portal, a place where people want to go. To do that, we need knowledge management. Knowledge management takes a lot of time to do it really well, but um, um, I've assigned that out as a task, and, and Spencer's here, and I know he's going to do an amazing job. Um, infrastructure asset management, so we've done all our PC data and stuff like that, but we've got very little at the moment in the way of infrastructure asset management. That would benefit us enormously, um, so we're looking at that, and then... Um, I'm just currently wrangling with, with Ivanti and, and Andy's here today about to get my reporting to where I need it to be. Um, so that's kind of phase two. Um, and that's it. I've, there's no time for questions. Um, <laughs> but that's fine. But I am around. And I also have got some lovely brochures if you are interested in finding out more about our Unified Service Delivery Model Programme. So thank you very much.